Hi, in this video we're going to review the Shark Stratos Upright Vacuum Cleaner and that's this guy right here. Now we have model AZ3002. So what do you get with that model? What well, we've got it laid out here, we'll quickly walk through it. Of course you get the vacuum cleaner and it comes with all of the filters installed. You also get three tools, got them here. You get a crevice tool, an upholstery tool, and a pet power brush. You of course get a manual and there is something called an odor neutralizer cartridge. I have it installed here. Now let me see if I can just pop that out so you can see it. There it is. Now we'll talk about this a little bit later. Let's see if I can get that in. There we go. So let's talk a little bit more about the tool set. There is only three, which is kind of an underwhelming number. I mean, this is a kind of a premier shark upright. Would have been nice to see a few more tools. The uh, crevice tool here, fairly generic, as is the upholstery tool. Uh, these tools are all compression fit. Now, what that means is that they are pushed on to the end here, the end of the handle, for example, and they are pulled off. Uh, I prefer the system with a button that clicks into place and is secure until you press the button and it comes off. I find compression fit a little annoying, but it certainly does work. Now the tools will go on to the end of the handle. They will also go on to the end of the wand. Now, let me see if I can get the wand out here. It's a button called wand release. And there you go. A wand comes up so you can put the tools also onto the end of the wand and that's going to give you certainly a lot more reach good for overhead cleaning and maybe down into corners, things like that. So there we go. Now we've also got the pet power brush there. And we'll talk about that as soon as I get this back into place. There we go. Pet power brush. Now it, you know, it's got the word power in it, but this doesn't have a motor. It has a little turbine here and that's spun by vacuum suction which in turn spins the brush roll. So uh, the motorized tools tend to be a little bit better. Um, they don't bog down as easily, but this unit does have a lot of suction, so um, it is able to drive this tool fairly well. We will show the tool in use a little later. And it's also got a self-cleaning brush roll. There is room on the back of the vacuum to store two of the tools. The easier two to store are the upholstery tool and the crevice tool. And they store on like this. There you go. There are actually two kinds of shark liftaway technology. There's standard liftaway and there's powered liftaway. The Stratos comes with powered liftaway. What that means is when you're using the uh, liftaway pod carrying this around, you've got power to the end of the handle and that will allow you to run a powered tool. Now, unfortunately, the Stratos doesn't come with a power tool, but should you have one, you could run it at the end of the handle. It also provides power to the end of the wand, so you can run powered tools on the end of the wand. Now, that also means you can run your cleaner head um, in power liftaway mode. Uh, that is really handy, especially if you got to get under low furniture. You can see how you could be carrying this and using this and it, it's got a much much lower profile than it does in upright mode. I'm actually just going to turn it on. You'll see that the cleaner head does work in this mode. This is the Shark NV360. It too is a lift away vacuum but it is not powered lift away. So when I turn the vacuum on you cannot run this cleaner head, that brush roll won't spin. In terms of cleaning reach, we measure the power cord at 30 feet. 30 feet is a respectable length. Uh, 30 feet or more is pretty good. I think sometimes if you go under 30 feet, you might not be able to finish an area before you have to search for that next electrical outlet. It can be a bit of a pain. Now the hose on this vacuum is fairly short and if you're going to use say the you know the hose handle with a tool on it you're not going to get a lot of reach here before you pull the vacuum over but frankly 
you know, the reason the hose is so short is that if you're going to do that kind of cleaning, you can really just use the lift away feature. So let's talk about vacuum controls. This is the handle of the vacuum cleaner. You've got a series of controls here that are accessible right on the handle. The button here, which is vacuum power on off. And you have a floor setting slider here with three settings. The top setting here, thick carpet slash area rug. Middle setting, carpet slash low pile. Bottom setting is hard floor. Now, what's happening here um, in the top setting, thick carpet slash area rug, that um, you have a very rapid spinning uh, of the brush rolls in the cleaner head and it's opening up an inlet valve here. So uh, some of the suction is being bled off. So from the handle on down, you're getting less suction. So if you're using the vacuum in upright mode, that's giving you less suction at the cleaner head. Center setting, carpet slash, low pile. You've still got fast spinning brush rolls but you're bleeding off a little less suction. And the bottom setting, hard floor, this is closed, so you're getting as much, as much suction as possible, and the brush rolls are spinning much more slowly. There's a few other controls on the vacuum. You have a handle release button here. Push that down, handle comes away. You have a wand release button down here. If we push that down, you can see, wand comes away. You have the powered lift away button here. Now there's a dust cup release button right down here. And there's actually even a hose release button. Not something you're probably going to use too often, but you might if there's a clog or something. You push that down, hose comes away. Something you may have noticed in our discussion on controls here is there is no setting in which the brush rolls are off. You actually cannot turn the brush rolls off in this vacuum cleaner. So we're going to take a close look at the cleaner head here. We've taken it off of the vacuum. You can see this is the top of the cleaner head. It's one of the first things is you can see these five LED lights. Those are the headlights. They turn on when the vacuum is turned on. You can also see the soft brush roll along the front here. One of the interesting things about that is it is right up at the front of the cleaner head. So you will get cleaning right up to the front of the cleaner head, kind of handy. This is the underside of the cleaner head here. You can see the soft brush roll here. And this is, I guess, what I'd call the main brush roll. It's a little different. You've got these half rows of bristles and these power fins. Now this is uh, a self-cleaning brush roll. And I believe that means it's designed so that uh, you don't get hair, string, or thread tangling in it. And we will test that a little bit later in the video. You've also got a couple of these little wheels on the front for mobility. These larger wheels on the back of the cleaner head. Now they've got a rubber strip on them, so there's no, uh, I guess, scraping or marring of hard flooring. This main brush roll, well, it doesn't come out easily for cleaning. I'm sure you could take this cleaner head apart and get at it, but it's not designed to come out easily, unlike the soft brush roll here, which is designed to come out easily for cleaning. I'm going to see if I can show you how to do that now. You'll notice there's an orange slider here. If I push that down, this just pops right out, the soft brush roll, and this is actually rinsable in water. And when it's completely dry, you can put it back in. I'll see if I can do that now. Take this in here, put it in first, kind of line it up, and over here, there we go, right there, yeah, and no, there it is. Clicks into place, and that's it. Another feature on the cleaner head is the odor neutralizer technology, and according to Shark, it's designed to guard against bad odors inside your vacuum uh, from debris you may have picked up. Now, uh, let me, there's a little silver handle here. You pop that up and you can see there's these two green arrows there and you line those up if you're going to remove the cartridge or when you're putting it back in and here we go there's the cartridge there now the cartridge is actually the green portion here this is the cap when you buy a new cartridge you're just buying this green thing and it clips inside of the cap there's actually a couple of little uh, things here to, where you line it up and turn it to lock it into the cap. 
And let's put it back. You line up those green arrows and you can turn it. There we go. And you can see here, there's actually a dial. It says there's a minus and a plus. So you can increase the amount of odor, um, I guess, elimination, or the amount of the scent that's coming out, or you can decrease it. We have run the vacuum with the odor neutralizer cartridge installed, but you know, we don't have pets. Uh, we haven't had the vacuum for a long time, you know, such that there might be an odor coming out of the machine. Um, you know, and we have read online some people saying the odor neutralizer technology uh, works well, but it's pretty hard for us to test that, I guess, neutralization part. Now, um, what we can say is that after vacuuming, there is a slight a smell or a scent left in the room. I mean, it's fairly pleasant and uh, you can adjust the intensity. And yes, you can run the vacuum without the odor neutralizer cartridge installed. You actually just take the cartridge off of the cap and install the cap back in the cleaner head and you're good to go. So I'm going to talk a little bit about vacuum movement here. We have three vacuum cleaners. First one here is the uh, Shark Stratos. In the middle here, this red unit, is the uh, Shark Liftaway Speed, model ZU561. And at the end, we have the Dyson Ball Animal 3. I find that all three of these units move a little differently. That's why I've got them here. Looking at the Stratos, well, you know we have these two spinning brush rolls here. So on the low pile carpet, I find that it pulls itself forward quite nicely. It almost feels self-propelled, but it will fight you a little bit on the way back as those brush rolls are still spinning forward. It also turns quite tightly, uh, which is good. Now, I'm just going to turn it on and move it around a little bit. I think you can see it kind of claws itself forward there and you know it's a little tougher on the pullback but the turning is really quite good. Now this red model here, this is ZU561, you know it's substantially lighter than the Stratos, over three pounds lighter I believe and just by virtue of being so lightweight it really moves around easier. So let's turn this on, give it a shot. I think you can see just, uh, just, just like I say, by virtue of being lightweight, it just moves around a little easier now. The end here is a Dyson Ball Animal 3, and frankly, it, it is one of the tougher machines to move on this low pile carpet. It also weighs more than either of these vacuum cleaners. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so movement isn't too bad, but it definitely requires a little bit more muscle. Now back to the Stratos. We've also tried the Stratos on um, our hard floor, and you can still feel the heft of the vacuum a bit. I mean, it moves reasonably well, but still requires a little bit of muscle. And we also looked at it on a deep pile carpet. As you can see, on deep pile carpet everything works fine, but the vacuum does feel hefty and it requires an effort to move it around. With respect to weight, I've got a few machines here to provide, I guess, a bit of perspective. Uh, here is the Shark ZU561, 13.4 pounds, a fairly lightweight, upright. It's a more affordable unit as well, it's not as feature rich as these other machines here. Here is the Stratos. Now we've weighted at 16.4 pounds. You sometimes see on the shark side, I've seen 16.7 a fair bit, 
but I've weighed this carefully. I'm seeing 16.4. Um, next to that is the Shark Vertex, another popular uh, Shark Upright, 16.7 pounds, not too far off the Stratos. And at the very end is the Dyson Ball Animal 3, and that's 17.3 pounds, so quite a bit heavier. I performed a cleaning test on this low pile carpet. Now I created a debris out of ground up Cheerios, chili flakes, flax seeds, and split green peas, which is designed to mimic uh, fine, small, medium sized debris. Place that in a five foot long row after carefully weighing it with a very sensitive scale and pass the vacuum over it in one forward pass. I calculated pickup in that test at 99.7%, and that's a very good result. We performed the same test on a hard floor, and in this case, tile. There was virtually nothing left on the tile floor, so an excellent result. We wanted to test the vacuum on some larger debris, so we put Fruit Loops on this low pile carpet and ran the vacuum over them. Now those results weren't perfect, but actually they were pretty good. We've done that test with a lot of uprights. Many machines have a tendency to push a lot of those Fruit Loops forward just in front of the cleaner head, but you know this spinning brush roll that sits right at the front of the cleaner head, it really does help with larger debris. Now the Stratos has a self-cleaning brush roll. And where that's really going to come in handy is if you're dealing, for example, with hair, thread, string, that kind of thing. It should stop most of the tangling, if not all of the tangling. So we decided to put it to the test. We placed short white pet hair, long black human hair on this low pile carpet, ran the vacuum over it. Well, not perfect, but pretty good. I mean, there was some hair left on the brush roll. It pulled off pretty easily. You know, we've run that test with machines that don't have any of this, uh, you know, anti-tangle technology or self-cleaning brush rolls. They tend to really get bound up, and it's quite a bit of effort to remove all the hair off of the brush roll. Not so with this, so the uh, technology certainly is working, and um, it is an asset. It's always nice if your vacuum can clean right up tight against a wall. Sometimes you get things that get, you know, caught right in along an edge. You can always get at them with a uh, crevice tool or something, but that's extra work. If your vacuum cleans right up tight against the wall, it's very handy. So we performed an edge cleaning test with the vacuum. We took chili flakes, placed them up tight against the baseboard along one of our walls, ran the vacuum along it.
Well, maybe there was one tiny little chili flake left, but overall an excellent result. We've done that test with a host of uprights. Um, some of them do a great job. Some of them leave uh, a lot of those chili flakes in the edge, and some of them will even leave about an inch long swath of chili flakes along the wall. Not so with this. Pretty good edge cleaning. We also took a look at how well the PET power brush tool works. So this is the power brush tool. We want to see how it works on this kind of debris on a medium pile carpet. Now this is the turbo wheel here. Remember, this tool is run by suction. So that turbo wheel is spun by the suction. It in turn spins this brush roll here. So let's give it a try. Okay, well, it certainly has the power to deal with that kind of debris. It does a fairly good job, I guess. We performed a noise level test. Now, we use a digital noise level meter. We place it three feet in front of the cleaner head of the vacuum cleaner, turn the vacuum on, get the brush roll spinning, and calculate peak decibels over a 10 second period. We've been doing that for years. We've got statistics on a host of vacuum cleaners. Um, we've got just a few lined up here. Now let's talk stratos, 78 and a half decibels. So 78.5 decibels. It's actually the loudest upright we've tested to date. It has just dethroned the Hoover One Power Evolve, which is at 78.3 decibels. The Shark Vertex, 77 and a half. So maybe a little quieter than the stratos. At the very end is one of the quietest uprights we've tested. That's the Shark ZU62, 74.7. So it's quite a bit quieter than the Stratos. The vacuum has two pre-motor filters and one post-motor filter. Now your pre-motor filters are sitting under the dust canister. So we're going to take the dust canister off. Remember there's a little button here called dust cup release. Press that down. This comes away. You can see here we have a foam filter. And underneath that is a felt filter. Now, both of these are rinsable in water. Shark says you should uh, clean them about once a month. And of course, you wait till they're completely dry before you put them back in. Now, let's see if we can put that dust cup back on. It usually goes in pretty easy. Gotta make sure you've got your cable out of the way here. There we go. Um, now, your HEPA filter sits underneath this panel my hand under there. there's a catch. There we go. Panel comes off. This is the HEPA filter. It's kind of a little a tab you can push on here and pull it out. Now this HEPA filter is also rinsable in water and Shark says you should clean it about once a year. Now let me see if I can get that back in. Usually put the one side in first and then wait until it kind of clicks a little bit there. Panel, put the top end in first. There you go. Shark literature refers to the Stratos as having an anti-allergen complete seal. Now what that means is no unfiltered air is leaking out through poor seals or cracks in the vacuum body. Effectively all the air uh, sucked into the vacuum, it goes through all of those filters before it's expelled from the machine. The dust canister on the Stratos is a decent size and that means you shouldn't have to empty it too frequently. You know if you're if you've got a smaller dust canister and you're doing a longer cleaning job or maybe a large area if you have to stop and empty the dust canister all the time, that's not so good. Um, now I'm going to take the dust canister off here and we'll show how to empty it. Now to take it off again there's that dust cup release button here. Press it down. This comes away. There's a black tab on the back here. You push that down. That opens up this bottom door. I'll show you that now. And hopefully all of your dust and debris fall out. And then you can just close this door by hand. Now, one thing about this dust canister is uh, Shark is calling it an anti-wrap dust canister, which is interesting. I haven't run into that before. The idea, as I understand it, is that when you open up this bottom door, everything should fall out. You shouldn't have to stick your hand inside and pull stuck in debris out. And that is something that happens a lot with these bagless units. Now, in practice, we found that actually it, it, it 
it works reasonably well. Uh, we, uh, you know, a lot of the dust and debris does come out, but we have occasionally still had to put our hand in there and uh, pull out, you know, hair and things that do get stuck. So that's a review of the Shark Stratos Upright Vacuum Cleaner. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider subscribing, and thanks very much for watching.